Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden with the Geek Group. We're hanging out here today at the Heavy Industries Lab. And a lot of the guys in the forums are going off on laser projects right now. So I wanted to take a minute and talk about some of the lasers we have in our collection because everybody's like, I've heard about this giant laser you guys have. What, what's this? Do you have one of these? Do you have this? So this is what we have. And I want to take a minute and talk about just some basic stuff of the kinds of lasers we have and, and what status they're in because a lot of them are at various different levels of functionality because these are all donated. And one of the fun things about getting equipment donated is it frequently doesn't work or it's really flaky in some way. So we're going to cover that. The basics of what we have and everything that does power up is powered up right now. So if it doesn't work in this video, it probably doesn't work and I'll, I'll explain that. We have this big Allen Bradley thing which is a barcode detector. And here I'll let Mikey get a good close up on that. Okay, that's the, the box, and in the box are bits, and here's the bits. Okay, so there's, there's some relays and stuff. It's probably, judging by the looks of the laser heads themselves, it's a scanning head. It's got a, a little servo in there, and it's on. It is emitting light. It's a little diode laser. 670 nanometer, one milliwatt max output. This is catalog number 2755 hyphen L D eight B one um, uh, serial A revision C and this uh, dates to May of 95 so it works good it's great it probably came off an assembly line somewhere or a shipping station or something like that but it's nifty it's cool I got a bunch of these we got like half a dozen of them all right we have a pair of the little Melagrio Heenies, these both work. Doo, doo, doo. And there, we use these for just the tabletop demos with kids and that, where you bounce it around a couple mirrors and things like that. These are fun lasers. I would like to have these doing uh, some kind of demonstration on a tabletop. And now that we have the SR100, we can make an optics bench, which is really cool. Like we can take a whole four foot by eight foot sheet of anything and tap quarter 20 holes on a one inch grid. We can do that. Um, we've got another big laser. This doesn't say Melagrio, but it's got that black tube mojo, so I'm thinking it might be. This is either much older or has had some abuse. It's a 5 milliwatt class 3A, and it's obviously helium neon. It's got the characteristic red dot. So yeah, and it's got the, the brick power supply. So the other Melagrios both have that. We've got this one, which it's a one milliwatt max helium neon laser from Teletrack in, Fair, in uh, Goleta, California. It's a model 150, serial number 1888 from June of 95. Never fired it up, don't have power supply for it, don't know anything about it, but this looks to be low voltage DC. It'll probably want 12 volts. We'll try it out one of these days. I've got this thing, which is really cool. It's from AccuSort Systems. It's got a little LCD display on top that says ready to read and the beam was on earlier, it comes on and off of its own accord, but it's got a, an output here, some lights, here I'll let Mikey get a good look at it. And the laser output is actually here on the bottom and it's got a servo, I can hear it whizzing along, probably a spinning mirror. These have the like piezo vibrating things. We've got some tubes on top of that. Um, some of them are good, some aren't. This one is cracked, so it's outgassed, but it's a good tube. Looks like a Heaney tube. It's a model 33-360-1.0 spectrophysics tube, so it's a nice tube. And we got another one that looks pretty similar to that. This one's got more exposed mirrors on the end. And this one's cracked here. But they're broken in ways that are easy to fix. Like you just, that can be sealed and this can be pumped down and regassed. I've got this little thing. It's a Spectrophysics, which appears to be intact. Needs a good cleaning, but this one probably just needs a power supply. This is a Spectrophysics 132404-660. Serial number is 3481-1262. Looks to be about 90s vintage. And we've got this one, which came from Mike V, and he got it in 83, there it is, Mike's autograph. Thanks Mike, we love you. And this is the classic 
spectrophysics, little high school laser. It's a model 150-1 from October of 83, serial number 750. I've had like three of these of my own in my lifetime. I, I started one of these in high school. This is my first laser right here. And every 15-year-old every boy needs one of these. Now, you can see this spectrophysics laser. Now, this is the one everybody wants to see. I brought it out from storage. We've had it locked away, safely hidden for years. This is our Spectrophysics 3000 series YAG laser. And I'm, I'm going to give Mikey a moment to adjust the camera so that you can see it. OK, this is the big dog. It's a Spectrophysics 3400 neodymium YAG laser. Um, it's water cooled. It has 50 watts of output power. It's a beast of a laser. We've never turned it on because this thing scares the hell out of me. It makes, an it, it makes an invisible beam. And because of that, I won't, I, I know enough to know that I don't know enough to operate this safely without somebody who knows more. So we're waiting until we have a proper setup in a safe room with a good controlled environment, and then we'll set this up and get it operating. If one of our members wants to work on the restoration of this laser to bring it into operational condition. I support that 100%. It's, it's all here. We've got all the bits and pieces. There's a water cooling system here. We have the separate power supply, which fills a pallet up there on, on one of the racks. It's, it's massive. I mean, the power supply weighs like 500 pounds. But we have it. It's all here. It's ready to go. And I'll take off some pieces and show them to you. Understand that this has sat in storage for a lot of years. It's had a rough life, but we've done what we can to take good care of it. This is a model 3220, serial number 46616158. And I don't know what this is, but it says that the ND YAG laser must be properly mode locked before attaching frequency doubler or damage to crystal may occur. Please consult manual before use. So I'm guessing this is a frequency doubler, which should take our invisible beam laser into a visible beam. I would guess a nice green. But we've got a frequency doubler for it. Cool. Here's the power supply. This is the main chamber with the water block. And on this end, there's a removable piece here, which I'm guessing is a, a mirror. And it's not a mirror at visible light, but I'll bet it is at the frequencies this works at. It's got vertical and horizontal adjustments on the back. It also has SIG out and bias through BNC connections. And then it's got this big thing here, which is the water in and out for cooling, a Centronics connector, and this, which I'm guessing is a big power connector. So now you've seen it. You know everything that I know about this laser. Um, it was originally owned by a university. They sold it at surplus. It is my understanding that a grad student screwed it up. Um, <laughs> something with the cooling system. Probably filled it with tap water or something like that. And in this town, that's suicidal. But now you know all the basics there are to know about the lasers. This is our basic collection here at the lab. All of these lasers are here for members to come and play with and tinker and, and do, you know, laser-like goodness. That's what we're here for. So come on down, grab a laser, and have some fun. Let's build an optics bench. Let's do holograms. Let's do whatever you want to do. That's, if you want to do a laser light show, whatever. There's no rules to this stuff. Come on down and play. I'm Chris Bowden with The Geek Group. If you have any questions, get in our forums at www.thegeekgroup.org, and I will see you next time. Thanks, guys.